June twelfth, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Psalms chapters 58 and 59 from the Old Testament Do you rulers really pronounce just decisions? Do you judge people fairly? No, you plan how to do what is unjust. You deal out violence in the earth. The wicked turn aside from birth. Liars go astray as soon as they are born. Their venom is like that of a snake, like a deaf serpent that does not hear, that does not respond to the magicians or to a skilled snake charmer. O oh God, break the teeth in their mouths, smash the jawbones of the lions, O Lord. Let them disappear like water that flows away. Let them wither like grass. Let them be like a snail that melts away as it moves along. Let them be like stillborn babies that never see the sun. Before the kindling is even placed under your pots, he will sweep it away along with both the raw and cooked meat. The godly will rejoice when they see vengeance carried out. They will bathe their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then observers will say, yes, indeed, the godly are rewarded. Yes, indeed, there is a God who judges in the earth. Deliver me from my enemies, my God. Protect me from those who attack me. Deliver me from evildoers. Rescue me from violent men. For look, they wait to ambush me. Powerful men stalk me, but not because I have rebelled or sinned, O Lord. Though I have done nothing wrong, they are anxious to attack. Spring into action and help me take notice of me. You, O Lord God, the invincible warrior, the God of Israel, rouse yourself and punish all the nations. Have no mercy on any treacherous evildoers. Selah. They return in the evening. They growl like a dog and prowl around outside the city. Look, they hurl insults at me and openly threaten to kill me. For they say, Who hears? But you, O Lord, laugh in disgust at them. You taunt all the nations. You are my source of strength. I will wait for you. For God is my refuge. The God who loves me will help me. God will enable me to triumph over my enemies. Do not strike them dead suddenly, because then my people might forget the lesson. Use your power to make them homeless vagabonds, and then bring them down. O Lord who shields us. They speak sinful words, so let them be trapped by their own pride and by the curses and lies they speak. Angrily wipe them out. Wipe them out so they vanish. Let them know that God rules in Jacob and to the ends of the earth. Selah. They return in the evening. They growl like a dog and prowl around outside the city. They wander around looking for something to eat. They refuse to sleep until they are full. As for me, I will sing about your strength. I will praise your loyal love in the morning, for you are my refuge and my place of shelter when I face trouble. You are my source of strength. I will sing praises to you, for God is my refuge, the God who loves me. God, I, I realize that this psalm, the, the second one, was written by David when when Saul had his house surrounded and he's trying to murder him and and I realize that that's what this is about but I also realize that you're very intentional about all of the stories and words that are put into the Bible so when David's talking about do not strike them dead suddenly because then my people might forget the lesson. Use your power to make them homeless vagabonds and then bring them down. They speak sinful words. Let them be trapped by their own pride and by the curses and lies they speak. I, I, again, I, I realize, not completely because I've never been in that situation, but I realize this is David's situation of, of being trapped and wanting somebody who wants to murder him. But when I read that, that was, that meant something completely different to me. That meant the place that I was at a little over a dozen years ago where 
where I had turned completely away from you. It wasn't that I didn't know about you. I, I was raised in the church. I knew the Bible. I even prayed to you still once in a while. But I wanted nothing to do with you. I wanted nothing to do with people who loved you. I definitely didn't want anything to do with church. My world was all about me. Yes, I was nice. Yes, I was kind. Yes, I was considerate. But still the world revolved around me. It didn't revolve around you. And I remember those lessons that you taught me. And looking back, I can see them now. <laughs> At the time, they were too subtle in the face of my own ego. And so my lessons from you became more and more severe and more and more obvious as things and people and situations were removed from my life. Good friends were taken away. Jobs were taken away. Money was taken away. And eventually my home was taken away. And yet through all of that, your point wasn't to destroy me. <laughs> Even though to some people it may sound like it. Your point wasn't to destroy me. Your point was to allow me to grow closer to you and become completely and solely dependent upon you. Not dependent upon money, not dependent upon the accolades of others, not dependent upon my material possessions, and definitely not dependent upon my own pride is what destroyed me. And you know, God, that to this very day, I thank you. I thank you so much for not destroying me, but for loving me enough to stop me, for teaching me the lessons I needed to be taught, even removing the house over my head in order to bring me down, in order to take away my ego. God, there's so many people in the world right now that are kind, considerate, loving people. But their world still revolves around them. They're so incredibly selfish, just like I was, and sometimes still am. When our world is not all about you, it automatically becomes all about us. God, my favorite verse, John 3.30, you must become greater, I must become less. You, God, must become greater to the point that I don't even want to exist in this world except to glorify you. I don't want people to remember me except for what I said about you or acted on your behalf. God, I know where I came from. I know where I came from because it was so incredibly far away from you to the point that I read these Psalms and instead of going, yeah, God, yeah, David, I'm like, shoot, that's me. <laughs> I'm Saul. I'm outside the house. I'm making it all about me. My pride is bringing me down. My choices, my consequences. God, thank you for loving me enough to stop all of that. For making it a lesson so obvious that finally I understood. Finally, my heart changed. Finally, my mind accepted what was happening. Finally, allowing your words to sink into my life so that I could begin to live them every day. God, I know I still fall back into that trap of it's all about me. Please continue to humble my path, allowing me to submit to you every single day and sometimes every hour. All that I am so I can be all that you want me to be, all that you made me to be. My best friend today reminded me that You made me a certain way. And there are times, <laughs> there are times, God, when I'm really frustrated with who I am. I'm frustrated with the gifts you gave me. 
and I should probably ask for forgiveness for saying that, but I truly get frustrated sometimes. You gave me a lot. <laughs> and for that, I'm incredibly thankful. You gave me a lot in my life. You have given me so many gifts. But as I become less and you become more, I know that those gifts have to all be used for your glory. And you know, because we continue to have this conversation, I am exhausted. <laughs> I am trying my hardest to use all those gifts that you gave me. And sometimes it's really frustrating. And sometimes I just want to go back to making it all about me. And just be trapped by my own pride, as the psalm says. I don't know why I want to go back to a prison of my own selfishness. I guess I think it will be easier. If only I could remember how incredibly hard and difficult and not peace-filled my world was back then without you. God, I know that my strength isn't enough to get me through all of this. My strength won't work in this situation. I call upon your strength so that all the incredible gifts that you have for some reason given to me, that I can use them all for your glory, not for mine. That all the talents, all the abilities, all of the knowledge I have can be used to glorify you. I don't want to be trapped by my pride. I don't want to be in this jail of selfishness. I want my life every single day to be lived to its fullest for you and for your people. Thank you for your grace today. Thank you for your patience with me as I try and figure out what all of this looks like. I ask for continued strength to continue to move forward in the honor of the ministries you've given me. I ask that it continue to be more and more about you and less and less about me. In your son's name I pray. Amen.